No, I'm much happier with that. Much, much happier. The next job we're going to do is I need to get lots of white now on my palette. Lots of lovely white paint. And let me just check now what other colours I need. I need some burnt sienna on my palette. So let me get some of that. Um, I think I'm okay for everything else. Now my next job is take a sip of tea. Very important, you must take a sip of tea regularly. <coughs> okay, let's look at the photograph. I'm going to start getting in some of the highlight colours of the foam, okay? And my brush for that will be this little round one here. Do I have another one? I had another one the other day. Let me see what that is now. Yeah, this one here. A slightly thicker round brush, okay? I'm going to just take some white. I start with some white on its own. Perhaps even a hint of Naples yellow. And I'm going to use this now just to create the drawing of some of these patches of foam, okay? So look, I'm going to go around here like this. And this is the slow, this is kind of the slow part now. This is where you need to take your time and just try and get this nice. See? So it's this kind of a process. Hold on. Leaving the very hard edge, okay? The very bright edge, leaving that alone. And then we come along here. Would you like me to zoom in for this part? So you can see now already what's happening. It's slowly coming to life, isn't it? Just make sure and add plenty of turpentine in with this white that we're using. A hint of Naples yellow. Because that Naples yellow will give it that slight glow kind of glow. A kind of glow, light, nice glow feeling. Now this is shadow here, I can see that shadow. But I'd like to get the general, just the general drawing of the form of the wave done with this bright colour, okay? And I'll show you what I'll do then after that. Let's go around there. Like so. Now we have a nice kind of a bit of a wave kind of breaking off of this one here and it goes off out into the distance, doesn't it? So you see what I did? I just gave it a little bit of a wiggle. And nothing is ever straight when doing this. There's no straight lines. Everything is a wiggle like this, okay? I'll just give it a little wiggle. And then we'll have a couple of more forks breaking off like this. And I don't know if you saw my tutorial on sailboats, um, the, one with, the ones with the red sailboats. <clears throat> I don't know if you saw my tutorial on that, but it shows very nicely how I create these kind of little breaks in the wave like this. It really does. And it's just almost like painting branches on a tree. You kind of start off with one like this and then another one breaks off of that. Then another one breaks off of that. And it just kind of goes on like that, you see? On and on and on and on. Now we have a thick one here. And we have another little nice one coming along like that. Soften that out. Just pull it back, look. I'm just pulling it back with my brush, that's all. I do beg your pardon. Uh, let's come across there with another one like that. Now this is the easy part really. The difficult part will be coming soon. Uh, well, well, when I say difficult, um, it's just tricky. That's all. That's the word I'm looking for. Tricky. The tricky part. Filling in between all of this and blending it all. That kind of stuff. Now we have a very bright colour along here, don't we? And it's a very solid kind of a colour as well. I'm going to come along like that and I'll soften it. Soften it back. Now 
So I hope you're enjoying this uh, tutorial. It's um, a nice one for a change. I like painting these types of scenes. It's like a bit of a challenge as well. Do you know what I mean? It's a nice little challenge. So now you can start to see everything kind of coming together, can't you? And I might switch now to a flat brush, a nice thin flat brush, okay? I'll give this a clean. And what I'm going to do is start off with all the bright parts of the um, foam, okay? All the really bright sections. So I'm going to mix, mix a very bright colour. I'm going to take some white. Um, I'll come down here, look, okay? Lots of white, lots of Naples yellow and a hint of pink, just a hint. But there's a lot of Naples yellow now in this mix. It's almost like, I suppose, it's kind of like a salmon type of a, a colour. But there's a huge amount of white in this now as well. It's very, very bright. Warm, a very warm, bright colour. Little more crimson, little more Naples yellow. And just keep going, mix plenty of this. Now, we have this here on our brush, I'm going to go in there now and I'm going to just start adding some little flicks to the bright side of our lines, okay? Little flicks coming along, coming off to the left because the sun is on the left, so the light is going to be on the left of all of these. And it's even going to be sort of softened in here and there as well, see? Just flick it across, left and right. Soften it down, okay? This is the tricky part, this technique. Now, I'm not even looking at the photograph anymore. I'm just kind of going my own with this. You can just look at the photograph, you can keep looking at that if you like. But I'd rather kind of just sort of put my own mark on this now from here on. Just make it my own type of a painting. Now let's go down here. Nice big one. And then it disappears off. Okay, now I'm mixing some more white, some Naples yellow and a little hint of crimson again. And you could even add a little drop of linseed just on its own if you wanted as well. <coughs> you could, um, as a thinners, just lose linseed oil as well, that would help the paint really flow around nicely on your canvas. Okay, and if you go off here now and just create a little bit of movement in the water as it goes off into the distance, look. A little bit of movement. Not too much. Just creating some movement as it goes off. Off up into that dark wave, you see. So I'm just kind of keeping this now simple. I'm just keeping it nice and easy for you to follow. You can use a little pointy brush for this as well if you like. You don't have to use a big flat brush like this. I'm just using this because it covers a lot more ground for me. Um, to know, especially with tutorials because I could be here for five hours painting this. And you'd see nothing because you would just get bored and you'd probably turn off. So I wouldn't be doing my job then would I? So I find it's handy for me like this just to kind of skip along with a big brush. And I find this, I just prefer painting like this in general. It's, um, I just get a lot of satisfaction painting like this. I really do. So we're coming along nicely now. We've got colours coming in grand. We're doing well. 
Okay, I'll take more white, more Naples yellow, a little touch of the crimson. Now I'm a bit more pinky this time. A little bit more on the pinky side, that's all. As you can see, I've just been very loose with all of this, okay? Very loose, very... Um, you know, I'm not worried too much about how this is going to look when it's finished. I'm just going along, having a bit of fun with this. Um, you know, just enjoy it, that's all. Just enjoy what you're doing for a while. We'll worry about details later, okay? Now, give it a little couple of wiggles here and there as it goes off into the distance, okay? And let's come up here, add some light to this section. Now, this will be very bright up here because of the sun. So, plenty of Naples yellow. I like to use Naples yellow a lot because it's a very soft, forgiving colour. If you try to use cadmium yellow with this now, it would be very rich and would go green. Whereas the Naples yellow won't. Very forgiving, like that. You know? Okay, coming across, just... Again, very loose, lightly flicking the brush, just to create a little texture on the canvas, that's all. And you see, I'll be putting in my shadows then, very soon, and the shadows will really bring all of this to life. It's all about the shadows when painting something like this. I find the shadows are what bring it to life. Right now I'm just kind of concentrating on filling in a lot of this form, the, the shape of the form, just filling it all in. Now, let me sit back again. I keep sitting back now, keep looking at this. Okay, now I'm going to look at the shadows. I mean, I have lots of dark shadows on this form, okay? Lots of them. So I'm going to start with, I'll take my small brush again, small flat brush. I'm going to mix um, a nice warm colour this time. I'm going to take some crimson, a hint of cyanide, okay, and I'll take a hint of burnt umber. Now that little kind of that touch, there's a touch of fawn in this and a touch of mauve. So it's a mauvey kind of shadowy colour. Let me just have a look at this now. Okay, I need more blue. I'm going to make a nice mauve colour for the shadows over here anyhow. I'm just going to go along like that. Let's get more blue on this side, yes? Okay, so you can see, I put one in. And I'm going to go up here now and go along at the back end of all these little ripples and just wiggle your brush along. Okay? Like that. Let's try this one. See, I'm softening it down then to the right hand side. So, remember what we done earlier with the light colours. We softened them down to the left hand side, didn't we? Well, now I'm going to soften these down to the right hand side, okay? The right hand side of all these light, light lines, I'm going to soften it down to the right hand side. Okay? Now, can you see that? Starting to make little sense? Let's try this one here and I'll show you, look. In fact, let's take a hint of black in this, perhaps even a hint of brown. And let's go along here now, we have Put this in like this first, okay? Soften it off into a point. Then 
then soften it down and away okay always horizontal when you soften it down you see pull it across even with your fingertip there Okay, and we have a little bit here and there, a little bit of shadow on the front of the form as well. You will have little shadows on the front of the form here and there. It takes time, doesn't it? I mean, it's a very long tutorial. Um, painting form like this it takes a lot of time, it really does. Yeah. Now, I keep sitting back, you have to keep sitting back and looking at what you're doing, okay? You have to try not to sit for too long close up like this because you won't get a full sense of what's going on in the painting. Do try and sit back every now and again. That's the, probably the best, the best advice I can give you right now, okay? Just try not to sit too close because I notice with a lot of my students when I'm giving lessons, they sit very close to the canvas like this and they're focusing too much on one particular area. So always sit back. And what I notice is like, even with a lot of students, I would say, okay, did. They might say to me, no, I'm not happy, that doesn't look right. But then when I say, okay, we'll stand back and take a look. So we'll stand back four or five feet, and then they're stunned. They can't believe how good it actually looks. You see what I mean? So that's what I'll say. Always stand back. Just give it a chance. Stand back to the, even sometimes to the opposite side of the room that you're in. Go right back to the back wall and have a look at the painting. And I promise you will be very, very surprised at how different it looks from a distance, okay? And it gives you a better sense of where to, to go from there and the next step and so on. Just don't be afraid to stand back and have a good look. And just don't, don't tell yourself immediately that it's wrong, that it's not right, okay? Just take a bit of time. So now I'm just kind of strengthening the shadows as I go, do you know what I mean? little bit at a time and everything is a little wiggle every time I put in a shadow it's a little wiggle with the brush because there's so much movement in the water that everything is moving around okay in and out of each other up and down so it's just a lot of little wiggles you see like painting lots of little branches coming off of a tree now let's go over here we have a bit more it's more of a bluey kind of a color on this side I find so I might mix a bit more of a kind of a bluey mauve type of um, a colour for this side over here. Let me take a bit of blue and a bit of mauve, or blue and pink rather, and just add some darks with that colour in over here. <coughs> Another cup of tea. Lovely cup of cup of tea. Lovely. I love my tea. Someday we'll sit down and have tea together when I'm touring touring the world doing my little workshops, we'll sit down and have a cup of tea and a chat, yes? How about that? When I'm famous, huh? When I'm famous like Bob Ross, I can come to your country and do little workshops and we'll sit down and have a chat. Nice cup of tea or coffee. Well, look, one can always dream, can't they? There's nothing wrong with dreaming at all. No. Okay, there we go. Off in the distance, look, just little flicks of colour, dark colour here and there. It's just to bring everything together, that's all. Right, again, sit back, take a look. I really love, I really love this section here, that's nice, isn't it? Isn't that wonderful? Really rich and bright. Now what I'm going to do next is take my palette knife let me just check what power I have. Okay, I've only got 12 minutes left on the camera. Dang it. I need to buy extra batteries. That's what I need to do. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow. 
Let me zoom back for you. Okay, now. Cadmium yellow with some white, okay? Let's just try that. Let's come down here. And let's go along here and just indicate some of that. Across there like that. Left and right with your palette knife, look. Let's just stick a bit of light in there for that sun. Okay? Just give us a nice bit of a glow there. Right. And we could even add some of that here and there as well. Take a little hint of that whitey yellow sort of a tone and come down here and just add little touches of that with your palette knife I think that would really give a nice impact on the painting and add some texture at the same time see and let's put a little bit of that here and there Palette knife is great, isn't it, for all this type of stuff. You can really do a lot with the palette knife, I find. It's kind of one of those tools, it's one of those kind of must-have tools, isn't it? Okay, my camera is going dead. I will have to um, charge it up. There's one thing that's annoying me on this painting, and it's that sun up there. I'm just not 100% with that. Let me lighten the centre of it first. And I'm going to put another one or two of these little pieces like that. Okay, that's a little bit better, isn't it? Perhaps soften it with the finger just a little. No. That's a bit better now, isn't it? Right, I just fixed the camera there because there was a little bit too much exposure on the camera and everything was sort of yellow um, so I just stopped the camera, I fixed it and this is the more of a natural colour now that we have alright um, Okay, I'm going to continue on and add some um, add some little shadows here and there okay so I'm just going to take my flat brush again I go into this white here I'm going to take some crimson and a little blue that's a bit much now what hair back into the crimson and a hint of cyan I think just to warm it slightly and I'm just going to go and warm some of these shadows up just a little bit just here and there okay not too much just a hint now I did add a couple of little small ripples of shadows off in the distance, just here and there as well. Um, but you know, it's just, it's a type of a painting where uh, there's kind of, there's almost no right and no wrong. It's just, it is what it is, type of a thing. Understand? So, don't think that what you're doing is wrong if you're making mistakes. Just sit back, go make yourself a cup of tea and start again. Alright, that's what I'll say to you. This is not perfect either by any means, and I know that. But this is just how I would kind of approach something like this. Let me just take a look at this now, let me move my camera down slightly so I can see what you can see. Okay, it's not bad. Now what I'm going to do is start adding, with a little pointy brush, some bright highlights to some of these waves. Now there is a couple of dark spots here and there as well which I would like to get in. So I'm going to take some burnt umber and just to suggest the, the, the sand showing through just kind of here and there you know. Here and there just under the water. So as if it's kind of 
very thin in some parts. Okay, just like this, just little hints of colour, a little wiggle here and there, nothing too kind of uh, prominent, you know, it's just a suggestion of the water kind of breaking and showing some of the sand underneath. Okay, you can even look, soften it off as well, here and there, give it a little mix around with your finger and it does help, it does just give the impression of that shallow type of water that we're looking for. Now let's take a little hint of black as well, just here and there. You see? I think that made a bit of a difference, didn't it? Now it's only a little, not too much. And the next step, step I'm going to do is take some white and come down here and mix the white into that kind of bright yellowy colour. So we have a very bright colour now. White and a bit of yellow. And I'm just going to go along now and start adding little details, small details. Look, even in the shadows I'm coming down with little wiggles just with paint, nothing else. And this will help. Um, just kind of catch the eye, do you know what I mean? Just to catch the eye a little here and there. And put a couple around up here. And it's nice sometimes just to use this thick paint on its own because it really gives you that dramatic look and that realistic feel when you put on thick paint like this. But I wouldn't overdo this either, being honest. I would try to keep it simple and um, not overdo your highlights like this. Just to know it, just to be aware, you know. Um, it's very easy to keep going and add bits of this and bits of that, you know, it's really easy, but just be careful that you don't overdo all these highlights. But I do want to show a lot of highlight in this painting, so I am just going to keep adding until I feel I've enough in there. Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah, that's quite nice. I'm liking these shadowed areas. So you can see what I did, it was just a case of adding little shadows and then put little lights through them. Look, one or two little ripples. Just to sort of break it up, you know. That's all I kind of do. And I'm going off into the distance now. I'm going to add little tiny ripples here and there in the distance as well. Look, a sort of hit and miss. So on top of those darks, add little tiny lights here and there, you see just to suggest the form on the top of those. It's just one or two, okay? Just one or two, it's not a lot. I'm not gonna cover the entire painting with little dots of white here and there, but it's just one or two, um, just to give it a little bit of life in the distance as well, you know? And it's a very dry brush, I'm sort of scraping this along now. Okay, right. Now I want to fix the shadows on this, yeah? What I'm going to do first is just go back over some of the sandy colour that I have here. A little hint of yellow white and a tiny hint of cyan. So I just want to get this very bright colour and I'm going to use this colour then just to fix some of the shadows here first. Straighten some of the lines so to speak and then come down and even fix one or two of these ones as well. Okay, now let me sit back and take a look at this. Yeah, that's good. I'm happy enough with that. 
no, the shadows. Now we have a rock here, but I think I might, I don't know, should I put the rock in or leave it out? I really don't know. Let's put it in. Come on, what the heck. Let's have a bit of fun. I put in the dark side first. Okay. Then the light side. Let's just simply take some white with, with burnt cyanide. Even a hint of Naples yellow. Then we'll take a small brush, get some burnt sienna, put it along here, a little burnt umber, just to darken it slightly. Now a little black, down at the back here, and then we have this little, um, let me see now how do I explain this to you. We just lighten this first and then we put a little light just around here where the water is sort of coming around. A little bit of light across there. So I'm going to take a little black for my shadow, uh, perhaps even a little cyanide. And I'm going to put a nice little shadow on this. Little shadow, just coming out there like that. I'm suggesting a couple of little lines going off. Then I want to put in some light on the sand so little touches of light where you can see on the photograph where the sand is kind of coming up lipping up slightly so it's almost falling down into the sides of the rock no just an impression that's all okay I'm not taking it too seriously and you could even put a little hint, if you wanted, a little hint of um, like a water or a little, little tiny hint of, you see, a little wetness, dampness kind of coming along here and there. Okay, that'll do fine. Now, onto the shadows. I said I wanted to fix the shadows on this. So I'm just going to go for a black nice dark black and I'm going to start with this one over here and I'm going to come across like that uh, perhaps even a touch of burnt umber yes let's not go too dark with these I know it's black on the photograph but I don't want to overdo the colour um, I can come out like this and disappears around the edge like that And it comes along. Let's give it a nice smooth edge. Okay, let's sit back now and take a look. That's nice. I'm happy with that. Take your time, there's no rush. Now we come up here to this one. Okay. There we go. That's not bad. Again, just keep sitting back, taking a look. We have a nice little one up here. Coming around and it sort of disappears off, doesn't it? Okay. This one can come in slightly and back out. And then down here, around the front. There's not much there, but I'm going to put one in anyway. I think it would help 
It would help kind of sit the wave down, wouldn't it? Right. How's that? There's one more little thing now I think I want to do with this. And that is, I just want to add some nice bright highlights to some on the front of these waves, okay? Just put some white and a hint of yellow, that's all. Just to really catch your eye. Alright? That's all. And put one around here, one there, look. Thick paint on its own, nothing else, yes? Let's put one around here. And we put a nice strong one across the top of this. And I think I will leave it. That is lovely. I'm very happy with that. Now let's try a little touch of yellow with a hint of white. And just for this corner here. There's a bit of a sparkle there, isn't there? Just like that. Okay. And that, my friends, is the end of that. Last thing I must do is, I must put a board up in here somewhere. Because I feel the sky needs something like that. Just up here. board going across the sky and I'm also going to add up here just along here a little hint of white with yellow just one or two just to help it merge into that distant one a little bit better um, I'm very happy with everything how everything turned out I think it turned out very very nice now in fairness and I'm just going around some of these small darks here, look, just with a little bit of white. Just wiggle around them. There. And that, my friends, is job done. Dave, I hope you like that. Let me zoom in now and show you what we have done. Isn't this lovely? Look at that. That lovely bright sun up in the corner there. I put a hint of white into the middle of that with my fingertip, okay? And just rubbed it around very loosely. And then we come down. Down to the wave at the front. Not lovely, look at that. Nice strong shadows then will really set this off. We have our little rock. Very simply done. Now you can add to this or you can leave things out, it's up to yourself, okay? Completely up to yourself. And there we are. I think it's a huge success. I'll frame this and I'll put a price on it and see if we have any interest. If you would like to hang this up in your home, please do let me know. Okay? I have to try and sell something too. Thank you very, very much for watching. I will see you. I will see you all next week. Um, I have a Patreon video coming soon because patrons, I must look after you as well um, for your valued support. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you so much everybody for watching. Thank you so much Dave for your suggestion. Also, I wanted to thank um, Patrick for... Patrick, um, Patrick had saved all my tutorials from my last channel which got hacked. He saved every tutorial and um, he let me go onto his Google account and uh, download what I needed and also uh, Barry, if you're watching Barry, Barry sent me, he actually sent me a little um, memory card, a micro memory card with every single tutorial on the memory card, can you believe that? He sent me this from, I think it was America, somewhere over in America, he posted this to me um, a little memory card with all my tutorials on there so I could download them back and put them back up on my page so that's why I was able to find a lot more of the older ones as well so thank you lads thank the both of you so 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 much um, I'm forever in your debt okay if you want me to paint anything for you just let me know because I really appreciate that okay competition coming up as well um, I'm trying to think of a competition think, give me some suggestions um, help me to come up with a nice kind of competition and how I would go about giving something away um, 
obviously I can't write down the names of every single subscriber on paper, that would take me forever. So I must try and come up with a system of picking someone, um, someone who's really a good kind of follower, someone who really follows me along every week, because I want to give away a painting. All right, so let me know what you think. In the meantime, go and have a bit of fun with this, try it, send me on your paintings. I'd love to see how you're doing with this, okay? And um, God bless you all. Subscribe, and uh, I will see you next week. Have fun painting. Take care.